here so I can have a choice. I remember sitting with my cousins, captivated in disbelief of my mother, aunts, and grandmother as they retold stories of their experiences with women's rights movements while they were growing up. I remember being so proud of my mother for taking an active stand in fighting for the rights of women to exercise the power of choice over their own bodies. My mother and her sisters fought for the right to participate in athletic teams in high school in an equal capacity to their male counterparts. My mom fought an emotional, arduous, and ultimately victorious battle to get in vitro fertilization covered under insurance in the state of Massachusetts. My mom told me of her struggles to overcome discrimination in areas of her life in which I would never dream of facing in my lifetime, at least not until now. When I was finally forced through education, through the I Am Choice campaign, followed by extensive independent research efforts, it was not until then that I realized I would follow in my mother's footsteps, fighting for some of the same basic human rights she and so many other women fought so hard to obtain and secure for my generation. Having grown up in what I so strongly felt was a gender equal society, it is very difficult for me to understand how issues such as a woman's right to privacy over her own medical information, over personal information about her body and life circumstances, have any legitimacy standing on a ballot in the United States in 2012. Though I have acknowledged and accepted this necessity to fight, I continue to wake up every morning to find myself in utter shock that among a handful of additional issues under argument in this 2012 race, my right to privacy over my medical records may actually be revoked, and additionally be revoked on the basis of an argument whose access lies in religious beliefs. Looking back on my family's childhood storytellings and many a lesson throughout my education, I can distinctly remember being warned that the battle of women's rights was not yet over. Until recently, I would have challenged those cautionary words, arguing that I had been given the same, if not more, opportunities than my male peers, maybe even going so far as to express a certain superiority at times, disputing that my gender was long free from those gender-based handcuffs which prevented our own mothers and grandmothers from what now seem to be trivial opportunities. I am here today on behalf of the I Am Choice campaign to encourage the women of St. Pete and across the state of Florida to educate themselves on the current status of their state and national level rights and to follow that by considering the two very different directions, <coughs> these rights could potentially go because of Amendment 6 on the 2012 ballot. It was not until I accidentally stared this issue directly in the face that I realized the true implications of this amendment and the critical choice I must make as a woman in the state of Florida during this coming election. This is not about money. This is not about health care. This is not about presidential candidates or even about politics. This is about choice. This is about equality. This is about my human rights. Rights shared with men without any history of question. This is about you. This is about your daughter. This is about our future. Please take a stand with me today to fight for our right to make decisions about our bodies and to be sure that no one other person or entity ever has the right to make that decision for us.